are a masterpiece. The master of the universe has designed you just the way you are. He made you unique and special. Detail by detail, he carefully imagined every hair on your head. He designed you with a purpose and with a promise. A promise that you may prosper. He gave you talents and interests and the opportunity to be in communion with him. You were created in his image to bring him glory. You are one of a kind. You are breathtaking. Because you are his masterpiece. Isn't that a wonderful thing to know you're a masterpiece? I never thought of myself as that, so I'm glad God does. So, anyway, <clears throat> welcome, friends, and excuse my voice. I'm not Elmo. It's a little froggy, but I am not Elmo today. Anyway, welcome, friends, family, our online families and online friends. Come join us. God is here. The Holy Spirit is here and present. I'm going to turn it over to the pastor now. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Got a couple of things coming up this week that I want to call your attention to. This is the beginning of Lent this week. And on Tuesday evening, we're going to have something very special that we've not done before, at least since I've been here. And it's Fat Tuesday or Shrove Tuesday or Mardi Gras, uh, the Christian version of Mardi Gras. <laughs> Um, we're going to have a pancake and bacon supper right here at the church at 6.30, Tuesday evening. It's come as you are, be as silly as you want to be, wear the whatever you want to wear in terms of costumes. It's not really a costume party because I don't believe in those things. But it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to tell jokes. We're going to eat uh, sweet and fat food to get it all out of the kitchen so that it's not in our kitchens during Lent which is why Shrove Tuesday or Fat Tuesday was, uh, was invented. So come this Tuesday, 6.30, right here in the uh, sanctuary. And then on Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, we will have an Ash Wednesday service at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. because we're, we're joining an online live stream from the New Room Conference. Uh, we'll, we'll be imposing ashes on foreheads or backs of hands. But uh, come at 4 o'clock. It's a 90-minute service, so it's, it'll be until 5.30. Uh, we'll watch it here together. We'll, I'll impose ashes on all who are here, and we'll begin Lent with a very special service online with our friends. So join us on Tuesday night for Fat Tuesday, and then Wednesday late afternoon for Ash Wednesday, 4 p.m. here at The Fount. Well, that's fun. We don't get to see those flashing uh, things all the time, so. We, we have a number of people out under the weather. Yes, uh, under the weather today, and so uh, we, we've, got, uh, we've got fill-ins, filling in. Yes, Christina wanted me to remind you that on March the 2nd, we're also going to have a game night, and that's going to include all of the congregations here at the Fount. Uh, it's at 6.30. Uh, it'll be a dessert and games, um, so bring your favorite game, board game, card game, table game, and uh, share it with, with all of us. That'll be fun. We'll, you'll hear more about that next week, too, as we, as we get closer to it. Good morning. If you all will stand, we're going to worship together this morning. And I'm just going to pray as we get started. God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the many blessings that you have given us. And God, I thank you that we can come as we are. We thank you for your grace and your mercy and your love. We thank you that we don't have to have it all together, but God, we thank you that you are renewing our minds. And God, I pray that our 
our actions would follow your character, that we would become more like you every single day. We give this time of worship to you, and we bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Let's worship together.
this morning, we just ask that you make us so aware of your presence, that you press in so heavily that we cannot ignore you, that the things that we walked in here today would just fade into the background and all it would be is just us and you. We come this morning for that kind of worship, not detached, not dispassionate, but intense and intimate. God, we come. Oh, this is nothing better than you. There's nothing better than
every single thing to you that we're carrying. We bring our hurt, we bring our guilt, we bring our shame, we bring our joys. God, we give it all to you. God, we can, we can rely on you. We thank you that we can trust in you and rely on your word. God, we pray that you would come alive in each one of us today, that your Holy Spirit would pour out on each and every one of us, God, that you would be in our hearts, you would be in our minds all the time, that we would just focus on you, that you would be our priority, that nothing else would shake us, God, that we would be so steadfast on you and your character that nothing can come against us. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. So we sing.
want to sing that again. Hallelujah, our God reigns. And if you're comfortable, will you just lift your hands? Because that is something to celebrate. He, he didn't stay in the grave. You know, we're going to celebrate Resurrection Sunday pretty soon. And I get so excited. Like, I, I don't, I know we have to, we have to go through all the steps. You know, he, he died. He was in the grave. It was a somber moment. But he rose again. Amen. So if you feel comfortable, please raise your hands and let's sing this again. Hallelujah. Thank you for who you are and what you've done for us, God. We give you all the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, we would ordinarily do our children's moment at this point, but I think all the children are home today. So we will skip right over that and move into our time of prayer. Uh, as we begin to share the joys and concerns in a moment, we're going to ask our online congregation to begin praying for us. But first, I want us to pause and uh, spend a few moments reflecting on our lives and how we might have fallen short of God's glory. So let us uh, spend a few moments in silent reflection as we consider the sins of our lives. Oh God, as we enter into the season of Lent starting this week, I pray that you would give us contrite hearts, that we would approach your throne humbly, acknowledging our sinfulness and repenting, turning away from sin and toward you. We have failed over and over again to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we failed to love our neighbor as ourselves. Forgive us, God. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And help us to begin today to walk in your holiness. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, now we're going to, here at the fount, we'll share the joys and concerns of our lives. And uh, we'll ask our online congregation to pray for us. Let me get my little handy-dandy pad. And if uh, there are any online prayer requests, I'll convey them to the congregation. So let's begin.
God, we're so grateful for the privilege it is to come to you directly and to pray to you for these concerns that have been lifted up from amongst our congregation. We pray healing over Lee, pray healing over Mike and Katie and Rick. We pray comfort for those families that have lost loved ones. We pray especially for the Olson family, the extended family. We pray for um, continued recovery for those who are experiencing your healing touch. And we pray that you would touch with your healing those who have not yet experienced that healing. Lord, help us. Help us to trust you in all things and to be led by your spirit in all things. That we would not be left to our own devices, but that we would find strength and power in your presence and in your spirit. We pray for the, our, our neighbors. We pray for our communities, our cities, our states, and our nation. We pray that peace would prevail and that uh, people would work together for the good of all. Help us, God, to come together as a people and help us to trust you in all of the ways that you provide for us. For we pray today in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, who taught us to pray with these words. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, if you'll please join me in the Apostles' Creed, and that should also be on the screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now our offering. Yes, indeed, it is time for our offering, and uh, the quartet is going to present a special offertory for us. Your uh, methods of giving are always on display. We thank you for your willingness to continue supporting and encouraging us here at the Fountain. Just for fun, let's try that one more time. It's time for the offering. Yeah. All right. As Christina mentioned earlier, that this is the, uh, the last week before we get into this period of waiting. We, we get into Lent and waiting for the death and the resurrection of Christ. Uh, I wanted to, uh, to give a reminder before we get into that period of waiting. Uh, all of the good work and all of the wonder that Christ did and gave for us. For our, our sake, for our saving, our salvation, for our life eternal, for everything we have. Our breath, our water, all of it. I wanted to remind everyone of that.
salvation. in the doxology. Doxology is such a wonderful prayer in itself, but Heavenly Father, we thank you for the abundant amount of blessings that you give to us, and may these that we bring back to you, our offerings and our tithes, may they be multiplied so that your light will shine from this, your church, in Jesus' name, amen. And now we'll go to our hymn number 507. As we sing hymn number 507, we're going to sing it through twice. This is through it all.
And God's word today comes from 2 Kings 6, 13 through 17. Go, find out where he is, the king ordered, so I can send men and capture him. The report came back. He is in Dothan. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, no, my lord, what shall we do, the servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. May God add a blessing to his word. If you've ever flown on an airplane or walked up to the edge of the Grand Canyon, you know what it's like to have your perspective changed. Just the vastness of the world seen from that vantage point. All of the details that we are used to seeing just fading away into a panorama of new details that we couldn't see before. It's not an illusion. There are no tricks involved. From way up there, everything just looks different, and our whole point of view is transformed. And that's our fresh topic this morning. Today is the sixth of our series, Fresh Start, and it is the last of our series. We're about to enter into Lent with Fat Tuesday and Ash Wednesday coming this week. And we're looking at how we can get a fresh start in this life this year. The first week we talked about the one essential thing that we need to get a truly fresh start. And can we all finally remember now what that one essential thing is? Yeah, that's pretty weak. <laughs> what is the one essential thing that we need in order to have a fresh start? Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. That's right. And for a true fresh start, we have to decide to follow Jesus. And once we choose to follow Jesus, that choice will lead to other choices and other fresh starts. We need a fresh start with our worship. We need a fresh start with the Word, the Bible. We need fresh courage, and we need a refresh of our mission. Today we're going to talk about a fresh perspective. What do we mean by a fresh perspective? What exactly is perspective? Well, the perspective is a way of seeing things. The perspective is a way of seeing our lives. It's the angle of view that we take. It's how we see things. It's how we see things as they take place in our lives. And it's our view of the world, our worldview, if you will, and our place in it. Now let's add fresh to our definition of perspective. Fresh means new, updated. So a fresh perspective would mean we get a new and updated view of the world and our place in it. That's what I hope that you will receive today. I hope that you'll get a fresh perspective of what God is doing in your life. And we're going to do that by looking at a few different places in the Bible. So open your Bible to 2 Kings chapter 6. It's what Pauline just read. 2 Kings chapter 6. Let me backfill the story for you a little bit. The king of Aram was at war with Israel. Every move the king of Aram made, the Israelites were one step ahead. The Aramean king thought that there was somebody in his camp telling the Israelites his plans. In other words, he thought there was a spy, or at least a spy balloon floating overhead. But the king's officers told him that no, there was no spy, there was no spy balloon. It was, the, it was Israel's prophet, Elisha. Elisha knew every move they would make because God told him what was going on. So the king of Aram ordered them to find out where Elisha was, and they found Elisha at Dothan. And the king sent a bunch of troops and chariots to get Elisha. Elisha's servants saw what was happening, and naturally he was scared. Here they were, him and Elisha 
against the huge Aramean army. And there was nowhere to go and no way out. They were as good as dead. So the servant tells Elisha what he sees. This is 2 Kings 6, verse 15. When an attendant of the man of God rose early in the morning and went out, an army with horses and chariots was all around the city. His servant said, Alas, master, what shall we do? But Elisha answers him with this, verse 16. He replied, Do not be afraid, for there are more with us than there are with them. Now put yourself in the servant's place. What would you have been thinking? The old man has lost his mind, right? But then Elisha prays for his servant, verse 17. Then Elisha prayed, O Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. So the Lord opened the eyes of the servant, and he saw. The mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Elisha prays that God will open the servant's eyes. God does that, and the servant gets a new perspective on the situation. God is right there for them, and he's taking care of them. It was going to be all right. So we need the same new perspective Elisha's servant needed. How many times have you felt like Elisha's servant? The world seems to be falling apart. When it seems the situation can't get any worse, It does. You're on the phone with one bill collector and another beeps in on call waiting. Your family life goes from bad to worse. Your kids just keep taking one wrong step after another. Your boss just keeps pushing you farther and farther. The doctor seems to have absolutely no good news for you. And you think, there's no way out of this. Lord, I pray that you will open our eyes. God had promised that he would never leave us or turn away from us. God is always with us. Our problem is that we spend too much time looking at the enemy and thinking about what might happen. Ask God to open your eyes. Ask him to let you see his closeness to you. Ask God to give you a fresh perspective on his presence. We need a fresh perspective on our usefulness. Here's one point where so many Christians need a fresh perspective. So many Christians don't think they have what it takes to be used by God. They don't have the knowledge or the training. They don't have the gifts or the abilities. So many Christians never fulfill their God-given destiny because they don't think they've got it whatever it is. So most Christians do absolutely nothing. It's not that they don't want to. They just don't see themselves as useful to God or anyone else, for that matter. But what we need is a fresh perspective on our usefulness. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. Paul is writing to the Christians in Ephesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. God saved us by his grace. God saved us from sin and saved us for heaven. But God is also up to something else. We are his masterpiece. He made us fresh in Christ. And now we can do the things that he planned for us long ago. If he planned for us to do things, then we must be useful to God. God wants to use us right now. Can you believe that? It's true. God has things to do here that only you can do. He wants to use you. He wants you to participate in the things he's doing now. He wants you to experience the exhilaration of being part of his grand plan. 
He saved you because he wants you to do good things. That's why he's left you here. Can you see it? Ask God to give you a fresh perspective of his purposes for you. Ask God to give you a fresh perspective of his mission for you. Ask God to give you a fresh perspective on your usefulness to him. Finally, we need a fresh perspective on our value to God. Do you feel valuable? How many times have we felt like we're not worth anything? How many times are we made to feel like we're worthless? And how many times are we told that we're not worth anything? Do you think you have any value? Do you think God values you? Let's see if God values us. Turn to Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. Romans 5, 6 through 8. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. We are utterly helpless to make ourselves right with God. But then Christ Jesus came. And he not only came, but he died. Why? To pay for our sins. God shows us just how much he loves us by sending the most valuable thing he has, his son. He sent his son to die for us because we have value to God. You are God's treasured possession. He gives up himself for you. That's what you mean to him. You mean everything to him. You are not worthless. In fact, you have infinite value. You are valuable to the creator of all things. Think about it. You are valuable to the Alpha and Omega. You are valuable to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You and me. We are valuable. Let that give you a fresh perspective on your value to God. I hope you've gained some perspective as we ventured together in this series, Fresh Start, and I hope you begun this year with some new or renewed hope and courage, and that whatever and wherever God takes us this year, I pray that we will all be better prepared to walk into God's future for us as individuals as well as for us as a family of God. Now let us spend a few moments in prayerful reflection as we consider what God may be saying to us today. Our closing hymn is number 522. Let us stand when we find it and sing together, Leave It There.
Amen. All right. Don't forget the church council meeting today at 1130. Actually, probably you could move that up a little bit, maybe 1115. Up in room 205 upstairs. Not, not over here, but upstairs in 205. And then don't forget our uh, Fat Tuesday dinner, pancake and, and bacon dinner this Tuesday at 630. And then our Ash Wednesday service at 4 o'clock this Wednesday. And then we begin Lent, the, the, the season of reflection and repentance that we call Lent. So until then, have a wonderful day today. God bless you. God be with you. And God uh, walk with you every step of the way. Amen. Yeah. Yeah.